Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Daniel Van Sant. I am from the Harkin Institute in the United States, and I am here this morning with Ella Geladi from Hello. Inosh in Israel. Hello. So, Ella, welcome. Um, we're going to talk a little bit today about entrepreneurship for people with psychosocial disabilities. Yes. But before we jump into that, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and Enosh and the program you're running? Okay, so first of all, thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you for inviting us. So my name is Ella Giladi. I'm a criminologist and a social worker. And I work in the field of psychosocial disabilities and rehabilitation for 17 years. And I work as a professional supervisor at Enosh, the Israeli Mental Health Association, which is the largest and leading uh, mental health association, making uh, policy, advocacy, and new, um, and new services for people in the community. And we exist for more than 43 years <laughs> now. Great. And so you have this entrepreneurship program for people with psychosocial disabilities all across Israel. Um, tell us a little bit about the model that you use to run this program. Okay, yes. So we have a lot of um, employment uh, sections. We do, and one of them is entrepreneurship program, which is called Ma'of. And the model is about three major uh, interventions, like we have the entrepreneur, we have the case manager, and we have the business coach. And the three of them work together to make us successful because uh, people with psychosocial disabilities do have special needs like in the business and also keeping the mental health well enough to keep and sustain a business. So we invest a lot in this triangle. And the coaches, they have a, a yearly orientation on mental health because they are not coming from mental health uh, professionals. So we do have orientation on that. And also they have a regular meeting with the, co the case manager to understand more the person which they work with. Like for instance, if a coach works with a person and he's not able to get up in the morning because he has depression, sometimes they do not understand that. So the case manager explains how to work better with this person, maybe to make appointment at afternoon or maybe just later so he will be able to get up. And then the, the, co the, case, man the, co the case manager and the, the coach, they meet together also. And uh, the case manager has supervision, ongoing supervision, so they also become more professional at their field and help people make even better work. So this is a triangle working all together for the entrepreneur to succeed in his business. Great. So maybe tell us a little bit more about how each pieces of those triangles rely on each other and benefit from each other. And then I'm also curious if you work with any other sectors or if um, you're working with universities or government oh, or anything yes. like that as Thank well. You. <laughs> so um, this program well, it started in uh, 2008. And in uh, 2012, I think, uh, it was adopted by the by Israeli, Israeli Ministry of Health. <laughs> and we are actually providing this service by law. We are founded and supervised by them. So we work with them. We do not work yet in universities, but maybe we should start. And they rely on each other because to make the person to succeed, every owner business will relate to that and say, okay, to start and sustain a business is a hard work, especially for people who have the mental crisis, which has to manage their clinical side of uh, life, and also to do marketing and manage money and do uh, strategies, it's, it's a lot. So if they work all together, I think that's where success is. And we do have successes. <laughs> we have more than 500 people in our program for now. Wow. So it's a quite impact, I think. Yeah, so you, you mentioned obviously that Enosh provides a variety of services and, yes. and even additional employment services. Yes. But clearly between the Ministry for Health, Enosh, the business coaches, a lot of resources and efforts are going into entrepreneurship specifically. Yes. And so I'm wondering if you can tell our audience a little bit about why this focus on entrepreneurship? What opportunity does that provide? Why so much uh, resource and effort behind entrepreneurship? Yes, so 
I think there's a lot of self-stigma and social stigma towards people with psychosocial disabilities. So by entrepreneur to have a business and sustain it, it gives him most, it ups his self-efficacy, well-being, his um, belief in this hope in life. And also it reduces his um, needs in money because he's sustainable. And uh, so we like have personal impact and social impact because if an entrepreneur succeeds, it's more inclusion, less stigma for society because all of us buying or using their services and we are reducing uh, poverty rates. So it's a win-win for everybody, <laughs> actually. So we do want to invest it because it's the future of the labor market, we believe, not only in Israel, worldwide. People want to be independent now after the epidemic. So I think we're on the spot, and that's why this uh, program grows so much. We started, I think, with 50 people, hmm. and now we've more than 500. So wow. it's growing. <laughs> Yeah, so I would imagine with entrepreneurs, you probably have people working across dozens or hundreds of different industries, different yes. fields. I'm wondering if there's any exciting case study or examples you can give of the types of businesses that people are starting. <laughs> yes, you're so right. We have a lot of interesting businesses, uh, starting from the like regular businesses, uh, I know, side building in the internet and uh, coaches themselves, lecturers. We have a lot of lecturers because other program we have uh, called Dialogue, which uh, be people be coming to this program become uh, public speakers. And we also have uh, jewelry makers, cake designers, graphic designers, makeup artists, uh, body makeup artists, <laughs> I mentioned earlier. So it's a, a range of beautiful businesses in large range. <laughs> so my, my next question is, um, if you've got 500 or, or around 500 individuals with psychosocial disabilities right now in the program, what sort of opportunity is there for them to work together or collaborate or maybe peer support is not the yeah. exact right term here, no, but are, exactly. are they working yeah. together? And yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Actually, we started uh, our first hub in the north of Israel, and it was very successful. So we started to spread it across Israel, and it's actually peer support because they sit together, they learn together, they rely on each other, they understand each other's needs, they can support uh, also mentally each other. And also, uh, we have very interesting cases of peer support and entrepreneurs starting to employ other people with psychosocial disabilities also in their businesses. So as their business is growing up, they give opportunities to other people with psychosocial disabilities. So it's peer support, it's inclusion, it's reducing stigma, and uh, giving opportunity to, to all, actually. So we have a lot of peer support work. So I think it, it, the audience can clearly see the positive effect that this program has on the entrepreneur, on the person with the psychosocial disability. Uh, tell us a little bit about how the business coach might benefit from this or what are they learning, right? They're mm -hmm. also being exposed yes. to these new ideas about what a disability means and possibly that's affecting their business positively or, or helping them grow. That's a very interesting uh, point because uh, our coaches, they do not come with, from the field of psychosocial disabilities understanding. So actually when the entrepreneur meets his coach, they both learn from each other. The entrepreneur learns from his coach, but the coach learns about disabilities and psychosocial disabilities from his trainee. Mm. So actually he's also kind of advocate for anti-stigma because he goes to his society, he goes to his family, his friends, and he starts to talk about the people that he trains and understand that mental, it's like um, mental health is everybody's story. So we start talking about that, we reduce the stigma. So there are actually our <laughs> uh, advocates of anti-stigma, which is Enosh also working on that, reducing the stigma in Israeli society right now. So I think they are very important. Mm -hmm. In that. So I, I know from some of the work that we do at the Harkin Institute about employment of people with disabilities that especially for psychosocial disabilities, mental health, or so-called invisible disabilities, non-apparent disabilities, whatever your <laughs> preferred identity is, um, these are typically disabilities that employers or non-disabled people struggle to understand yes. in terms of 
an accommodation, right? Yes. We can think about putting something in large print or braille or a physical accessibility. Um, so with your expertise in this program, I wonder if you can share any best practices or things you've learned about how can we accommodate people with psychosocial disabilities? Mm -hmm. So actually, um, I think more practices we have, uh, not from the entrepreneurship program, but are uh, supportive employment in the free labor, free labor market because we do have businesses and uh, bosses and uh, people who employ people with psychosocial disabilities come and say, okay, I don't know how to help him succeed at work. He's anxious, he's late, he's not coming. Sometimes his mental uh, health prevents for him to come to work. I need to summon work, 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 work. So what can I do? And we say, wait a minute, let's talk together. Let's mm -hmm. sit and I will explain to you, like maybe he needs more quiet place. Maybe he needs less assignments. Maybe you can put uh, his desk in a different direction where there's less light, mm -hmm. less noise, less people. Uh, to for me to be more familiar with his uh, workplace, maybe you can give him even private office, little private office. But he'll work ex ex exclusively if you do, um, if you do like, I forgot the word. Sorry, audience. <laughs> um, accessibility. <laughs> if you will learn more about psychosocial accessibility to workplace, you'll have the best employees ever. Mm -hmm. So you should ex you should do that. All the business owners, you should do that. <laughs> That's my message. And so for these entrepreneurs, right, if they are their own boss, they don't have the same process of requesting an accommodation or working with yes. somebody. But of course, they still need accommodations and work differently. So uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about how the business coaches and the entrepreneur work with the case managers to come up with those changes to the business model. Yes, uh, one of the points is uh, people want to be entrepreneurs because they want to control, they want to control the hours they work, how much effort they put in it, when and in what field they want to work. So that's very important. This is one, one part of it. And um, when the case manager and the coach meets with the person or without, sometimes uh, they try to understand how can they promote more and more the business and the coaches had questions like okay he's not doing his chores I gave him he's not up on time uh, he's very he's very anxious at my meetings what can I do to help him and we give him all kind of um, like resolving these problems but in the mental health there is no one fit for all it's a personal suit so there's nothing I can say, do this for all people. Right. Everyone needs his own suit. And it's very crucial to understand But me and you are not the same. People with mental uh, situations are not the same. Everyone has his own problems and he needs accommodations. So it's, I think that's one of the accessibilities to understand. There's no uh, suit for everybody. And you should sit with the person, understand, listen to him. His own experience is the most important thing. He will tell you what he needs. Just listen. <laughs> I think this is the best practice I can say. Rely on his experience. He's, uh, he knows his life better than anyone else. Right. There is no one-size-fits-all no. approach to anything, but especially, no. especially entrepreneurship and especially psychosocial disabilities. Exactly. Um, and as you said, mental health is everybody's story, so we have to listen to that story exactly. and respond to it. Yes. Um, so for people who've been joining the Zero Conference all week, you might have seen Ella's impact speech earlier this week yes. um, to learn about that, but for people who weren't able to tune into that, um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about how do we get more information about Enosh, about your program. Okay. Um, you have a lot of things, a lot of best <laughs> yes. practices to share. How do we learn more? Okay, so I see you see on the screen our QR code. So you just can screen it and go to our website. We have LinkedIn, we have website, we have Twitter, we have everything. We are very uh, social media. <laughs> Uh, and you can read about us, contact us, contact me, anybody, and we will be happy to work together uh, globally even to help you to integrate people with psychosocial disabilities in your labor market. So we are here. We, we, we wait for you. <laughs> 
Great. Well, we are out of time here, so thank you, everybody. Again, I am Daniel Van Sant with the Harkin Institute and Ella Giladi from Thank you Inosh. very much. Thank, thank you, you very everybody. much.